Okay, we have a few occasions already that we had this bike. But interestingly, we just noticed we didn't really have any bike reviews about this bike on its own. Lagi na lang may bike comparison. I guess now is the time for that. What we have now is a European sports bike built in the Philippines and has been around since so many years ago. This is the RC390, KTM's dedicated model in the sports bike category. It has a 373cc engine, same as the Duke 390 but packaged in a sports bike setup. Don't be fooled by the small displacement, this is a proper race bike trainer with all the handling performance you'd expect from larger machines. It is a high performance super sports machine with its roots firmly planted on the racetrack. The RC stands for race competition so it is quite obvious where the inspiration is coming from. Okay, all this information came from KTM. <laughs> what I will give you on the other hand is my own version of my impressions of the bike as I used it. So here it goes. The original KTM RC390 burst into the scene back in 2014 and pretty much unchanged ever since. While the RC390 sleek includes the Yamaha R3 and the Honda CBR300R, if we put it in a Philippine perspective, this bike turns out to be one of the most affordable expressway legal sports bike available around. The only other option is to go for a Kawasaki Ninja 400 which as we know has a more costly purchase price tag attached to it. That makes the RC390 one of the most sought after sports bike for a budget conscious Pinoy folk. But is that all to this bike for it to be top choice for buyers? Let's see. The RC390 has all the personality you would expect from a KTM but in a very small package. Powering this bike is a liquid-cooled 373cc DOHC engine that has 1 cylinder and 4 strokes, which makes about 43 horsepower and 36Nm of torque, connected to a 6-speed transmission with slipper and assist clutch technology. It all comes under the control of the new ride-by-wire system that reconciles the difference between rider demand and engine capability to deliver smooth power changes. Iga nga, more refined and efficient power delivery from the engine. Much like the Duke 390, it has a generous torque at the bottom, but more refined in a way with a few lesser torque than its naked counterpart. Na discuss na natin to earlier in our Duke vs. RC comparison. Also, we mentioned that the RC more than compensates the lower torque with its fairings, giving it a better aerodynamics thus a higher top speed. The bike claims to be capable of running at a maximum of 168 km per hour, a few more than what the Duke 390 can deliver. While the torque is indeed lower than that of its naked bike counterpart, the Duke 390, it's still got so much torque available down low that the bike makes you feel it is faster. In a way, yes, the bike gets you to the 100 km per hour faster than other sports bike in its category, Something that is very beneficial in track, making it a very good base as a track bike. It has the same frame as the old generation Duke 390, again, almost, and hasn't changed for almost a decade now. However, the steering head is relatively shorter at 23.5 degrees from the vertical, thus shortening the stroke and likewise shorten the wheelbase of the bike. And as you know, this contributes to the great agility this bike delivers as such modification gives the bike faster response to changes in direction. Of course, the lightweight of the bike plays a large part in the handling as well to push this machine well into the knee-dragging territory. All these modifications in the RC guarantee quick, responsive, and playful handling in the track and mounting twisties. Well, to be honest, I have not tried using the RC390 in a track to fully appreciate the agility of the bike. However, the time that I have been using this bike in the winding roads of Antipolo, it really does give one the confidence of getting aggressive in corners with the bike leaning in with the slightest input from the rider. And the fact that the bike offers a lean over riding position, sobrang subsob, 
gets you in that attack groove. This is made possible by the strategically positioned clip-on bars which contribute greatly to the bike's sporty and aggressive riding position and enhancing control for the perfect climb through any corner. The bike comes with a lightweight tubular steel frame, aluminum swing arm, and WP suspension, 43mm upside down forks up front, and single shock preload adjustable at the rear. It comes with enormous disc brakes at front and rear that are connected to dual channel Bosch ABS safety features, all these being standard to KTM's 390 bike lineups. While all this makes the RC390 a very good track bike, how does it fare as a regular commuter then? The 2019 KTM RC390 sports bike engine provides not only considerable torque and strong acceleration performance but also exhibits good manners in daily use. All of which have an excellent fuel economy. We got about 25 to 28 kilometers per liter on mixed city and highway drives. While the fuel tank has been carefully designed to perfectly match the super sport style and smooth ergonomic principles of the KTM RC390, the 10 liter fuel tank capacity may be a downer for some as this may be a limiting factor in the cruising range of the bike especially in long expressway travels. You'll have to fill up more frequently than usual when going up Baguio for instance. The heat management is quite good, with its fairings effectively redirecting the engine heat away from the rider, especially when it is a known trait of KTMs to be hotter than other bikes. I have not had any overheats during the time it was with me, even when I got stuck in the usual Manila traffic. Though new users may be concerned with the temperature maxing out to 9 bars, something that needs to get used to especially with the old digital LCD panel. But still, I would suggest to just totally avoid getting stuck in traffic, especially that the fairings doesn't really help cool the engine at all, something that is quite common to all sports bikes. And also in that same light, the RC390 is known to have one of the most aggressive super sport ergonomics, much lower than most other sports bikes. A seat height of 820mm enables riders to have a secure position a very low clip on handlebar position, and a rear set bias foot pegs give you a riding triangle that would be very good in a track setting. But this may not be really good in a normal city drive. I rode this bike for almost one full day, and my whole back and wrists are aching at the end of the day. In comparison, it took me 3 days to get that same effect riding the R15 and almost none with the new 2022 RC200. Just imagine having to use this as a daily commuter squeezing through heavy traffic that would have been a fit in itself. The passenger seat is cleverly designed to look integrated into the bodywork so as not to compromise the super sport look of the KTM RC390, which makes the RC390 looks very sporty even more. In reality, this pillion seat is actually foam and doesn't seem to really provide any seat traction at all, and thus can be very uncomfortable to back rides for longer durations. But despite the rather uncomfortable riding stance of the RC390 for an urban setting commuter, it is indeed one looker bike. The RC390 offers an iconic twin projector headlamps at the front and integrated turn signals in the side mirrors, the first in its class, and what characterizes the RC390 as its signature trademark. With its razor sharp fairings, it clearly exhibits KTM's red to race mantra just by the looks alone. This bike features a duo of stylish headlights up front that is in keeping with its super sport race look and more importantly, provide excellent visibility in dark road conditions. Behind the windshield, a full digital LCD instrument cluster does duty, but one would wish a more updated panel for such a sporty bike. Despite being an 8 year old design, the RC390 still looks modern and very sharp. Reason why people still buy it and use it for everyday city commute, despite the inconvenience in its riding sense. Ti is pogi iganga. However, the only one thing I would have wished for this bike is a little more bulk as it tends to be overwhelmingly overshadowed in terms of size when placed side by side with other big sports bikes. Nevertheless, the looks more than make up for this lacking and it does this big time. Ang pogi talaga. 
Overall, the KTM RC390 is a sports bike that would give one the closest taste to a track-ready sports bike with the conveniences that would allow it for city use. One you can bring to the office every day, then readily take it out to a race on a weekend. A bike that is pure fun in its stock form. And with that, I guess I'll end my vlog here. If you like this video, do hit the thumbs up and do subscribe to Boss LPH. And don't forget to click that notification bell to be notified of our new uploads. And as I always say, stay awesome, stay safe. See you in the next episode. Bye for now.